Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today's video is about turning small, uh, inexpensive items uh, that you've thrifted into really pretty shabby chic decor with very little effort really. And the first item obviously is this little frame that I thrifted and I really like the picture in it, but it just doesn't go with anything. And so I'm just going to turn this into a different type of art. And so I cut this piece of batted, quilt batted lace, and I'm just going to glue that on. Now you can slightly see through this, but I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to be layering this anyway. And so you're not going to see any of that. So I just took some hot glue and glued all the way around the edges. And I'm having to be really careful here because I'm using my battery operated Ryobi hot glue gun. And it is a high temp glue gun. And if you guys have watched me long, you know I like to use the low temp guns. But my outlet, for some reason, I couldn't get it to work. And... So I had to use this for a little while and working with a project like this, uh, it's very easy to burn yourself. So I had to be very careful. It's been years since I really burned myself and, and I remember it like it was yesterday. So I try really hard to avoid that. But, um, so I just glued this on and then, but I cut it to fit the inside. So I'm going to leave it right where it is and just cut around and then glue that down as well and this is just a little vintage hanky and so now i'll be able to use what i didn't use of it on another project so once i get this glued all the way around then i'm going to use my lace the, my little trim lace that i get from the dollar tree and again if you guys have seen me long uh, you see that i use this a lot it's just a good size lace, a good thickness and uh, width, and it just works well for trimming out. So again, I just hot glue this all the way around uh, just so that it neatens up the outer edge. And then when I finish that, then I'm going to make a little flower arrangement. Now I got some little picks at Joann's Fabrics the other day, and uh they were 60% off, so I felt like I got these at a pretty good price. So I'm just going to make a little bouquet out of them. And it'll almost look like a little wedding bouquet, but I'm just going to make a small one to go in this frame. So I just kind of get it into the shape that I want it. And then I'm using uh, this fabric, which is just a curtain shear that I have uh, torn into little strips. And I use that a lot. I use it for my hang tag ribbons and I actually use it for a lot of different things. But I'm just going to wrap it around the stem, the stems here until I get, uh, get it really secure. And then I'm just going to hot glue that end in place. And uh, as you can see, this looks like it belongs in a wedding. And this was very, very little effort. So uh, I glued that edge in, or that end in place. And then I'm going to take another strip and tie uh, just a simple bow and kind of let it hang. And that's how I'm going to finish this little bouquet off. And then I'm going to just glue it into the frame. And I know it doesn't fit exactly, but I, I purposely did that because I want to glue this in at an angle. And you're just going to make sure that you get it really secure. Uh, wherever anything is going to be touching, make sure that you have some hot glue on it because you don't want any movement of this. And I felt like too much of this greenery was showing here. So I took some other little flowers. And these are some more picks that I got at Joann's. And I'm just going to kind of glue those in to fill that space in with all that greenery. And then once I get a few of these glued in, then I'll glue my, my bouquet to the board behind it. 
Again, you want to make sure that you put plenty of glue on that so that it stays in place when, uh, when the, the frame is moved. So if you feel any movement on it, then just make sure you put some more glue behind that area. And then I took my little heat gun and, and held it up next to my ribbon so that it kind of uh, finished off those edges, anything that was too wispy, and even curled my ribbon somewhat if I held it when I held it close. And I don't think that was too much effort, and I really like how this turned out. I love the soft colors and the softness of the fabric. And next, I'm going to do a couple of very quick makeovers. Uh, this is uh, a piece that my friend Paula brought me, and she had started it. And um, I've actually had this finish in my store, and it used to sell good. And for some reason recently, it stopped selling for me. So I'm just going to kind of shabby chic this one up. So this one's going to get two coats of this pink. And this is half buttercream and half Dixie Belle Tea Rose. Both of those are Dixie Belle colors. So uh, I mix those half and half. And this is the color that I came up with. And I really love the soft, warm pink that this turned out to be. So this is going to get two coats. And then I've had this little owl for a while, and I think someone brought it and gave it to me. Uh, and I had meant to do something with it and just hadn't gotten around to it. I even thought about painting it white. But I think I'm just going to paint it this same color of pink and give it more of a shabby chic look. I really never tried to do that with an owl. Uh, but even an owl can look shabby chic. So this is going to also get two coats of this same pink and almost immediately you can see this transforming into more of a shabby chic look uh, this could also go in a baby's room and now that both of them have two coats of uh, the tea rose I'm going to go over both of them with this white wax and I just kind of brush it on and wipe it off this is also Dixie Bell white wax but um, I find that most waxes work really well. I have a lot of questions about what kind I use, and I do use Dixie Bell because I sell that in my store. But um, I just like any white wax. Um, other than, now I like Waverly, but uh, it will pull your paint off easier because it's a liquid wax. But any cream cream type wax or pasty type wax uh, I've been happy with every one that I've tried, so uh, just find one that is a good price and um, just try it. If you haven't tried white wax, it's, it's really fun to use when there's some detail for the white to just kind of settle down into. So I do that on both of these pieces. And then all I'm going to do with this little, I guess it's a duck, I don't think it's a swan, it could be. But I'm just going to tie a soft pink ribbon around this neck, and that will just completely finish this one off. I don't want to get it too detailed. I just want it to soften it and give it more of a shabby chic look. Now, all of these items will get a hang tag when I'm finished, but uh, tying this little simple bow around this one is all that I did. And I think that little change it wasn't hard at all and it was quick uh really made a big difference and then for the owl I, like i said i put um some white wax on it and wiped it off and then i'm just tying an, a bow around its neck and then uh, i tied a kind of a looser bow bow that hung down on this one and then i'm going to take a little resin mold just a little rose resin mold uh, that I have painted pink and uh, white waxed it also and just kind of glue, glue it right in the center. And again, I think with very little effort, it really changed this owl up into something that would work into your shabby chic decor. Now, although I don't decorate shabby chic, 
making little items like this or redoing little items like this is something I could just do all day long. I really enjoy it. Now, I thrifted these little baby shoes and uh, with the intention of making them into some shabby chic decor. And I'm just going to use one shoe for each of these projects. And for the first project, I'm just going to turn it into a little uh, pincushion. So I'm not real crazy about this little scalloped thing that's on the top. So I'm going to cut that off um, and just kind of lay that the other one aside until I figure out what I'm going to do with it. Now, don't worry about cutting this perfectly because it's going to get some trim and things like that that will hide any of the imperfections. So, um, this is just a pillowcase uh, that has a soft print on it. So, I'm just going to put some polyfill in. I'll cut, I'm just going to cut a circle and put some polyfill in it and tie that off and stuff it down in the shoe to make the pin cushion. And then I'll glue that down in place. Now, I stuffed it pretty tightly because I want to be able to really press on that and work it around in it and get it the way I want it. So, um, so then I decided that I don't like this strap either. So, I'm going to cut the strap off. Uh, and here I am just kind of pulling and tucking until I get the look that I want on top. And sometimes, especially when you have an odd-shaped eye, uh, an odd shaped item it's a little hard to get that maneuver down in there and the shape be right uh, but you just have to kind of keep working with it and you're going to be gluing it in place so anything that you don't like you can just kind of add more glue and just stuff it down in more so i'm sorry i'm out of frame on this one um, it seems like on this one i got out of frame quite a bit but here I am just stuffing that down in there and I'll add glue once I get it the way that I want it. And then I trimmed out around the top of the shoe and kind of let that trim overlap over that fabric as well so that it hid that seam completely and camouflaged any uh, imperfections. And then I decided that I got too many tucks on that uh, pin cushion. So I cut uh, a piece of this quilted lace uh, larger than what I needed so that I could just kind of glue that seam where I added that lace. Uh, so I should have waited on that. I didn't know I was going to have to fix this problem. But I just very slowly and very carefully uh, made that fit exactly and i didn't cut it off because I, I don't know exactly what size that i need it until i get this completely covered so i just kind of take my time and go all the way around this right exactly on that seam with the glue so that i can just glue it in place and then uh, once i get it all glued down and i know that the glue is well dry then I just take my scissors and cut all the excess off and then I'll uh, put another piece of lace over it. And then I just started adding some shabby chic roses or some uh, shabby roses on it uh, until I got it dressed up the amount that I wanted it. And because I'm so badly out of frame, I'm not gonna show the rest of this pro uh, process. But I did tie a little bow on one side of it and uh, trimmed it all the way around the top. And then I didn't like that little seam at the bottom, so I just took a very thin piece of lace and glued just over that seam. But these little shoes were a little more involved than the other ones that I did, but they still weren't too bad. Now the next project that I'm gonna do is the other shoe. And this is gonna be a little, pre uh, a little flower arrangement. So I cut some floral foam to fit inside the shoe and glued that down inside the shoe. And then once I got that glued in, then I just started making a little simple flower arrangement inside. And I want some height on the back side of the shoe. I just determined which side I wanted to be the back side. 
and that's where I'm going to put a little bit of height and then just kind of step it down uh, toward the front. Now these little simple arrangements like this in small items are not hard at all. You just want to make sure that your height is in the back. If both sides are going to be showing, uh, then you're going to put your height in the middle and then just slightly step down on each side until you get to the very ends. Now this one I decided also that I didn't want that little strap, so I end up cutting it off and I end up cutting the scalloped uh, front there off this one as well but i just keep adding these until i get enough now a little bit of that green is going to be showing and how i'm going to hide that is just take some little bits of lace and add a little dot of glue down on the floral foam and then just uh, press that lace down over that and it'll almost act like a tick tissue wrap and cover what doesn't need to show uh, but I'm just using that little little bits of lace and I also glued a little thin strip of lace around the seam at the bottom of this one and that little touch you would be amazed at the difference that it makes just having that little seam gone and then I added a little bit wider piece of lace around the top uh, to hide some of that and again I cut that strap off and the little scalloped edge and I needed to hide that anyway so that lace trimmed out the top and then hid some of that and now I'm just going to add some embellishments to it until I get the look that I want and I'm adding shabby roses and little bits of lace and some of these little pearl beads now, I really enjoyed making over these little shoes. Uh, when I bought them, I was actually looking for some little baby boots that I would like. And then I saw these and thought these would work well also. Now, where I've taken the straps off, I'm going to replace the straps with some ribbon. And so, I just cut two strips of ribbon and I glue them uh, to the shoe where I cut the strap off on the inside and then uh, I, I glued one to each side and then I'm just going to tie it in a bow on the top and again that will replace that strap but also add a little more character to it and then I'll just go over uh, I'll just make sure that where I took the strap off I've embellished there so that it hides the cut but you can kind of use your imagination with this one and just add until you uh, get the look that you want and you may add some embellishments that I didn't think of. This is one that you can just kind of create as you go. And I don't think I mentioned that everything that I added, I just added with regular hot glue. I want to give a shout out to Sharon who came by uh, to visit today and uh, she was such a sweet lady and I so enjoyed her visit and she actually came in in the middle of a big project that my sister and I have going on uh, I used to when I first opened the store I used to sell old costume jewelry and uh, I had just bought out an estate at the time and had so much of it that I I um, decided to sell it and it sold really well for a while and I, once I sold down some I just kind of got out of it uh, but I ran across another estate uh, that was selling out their jewelry at a good price so I decided to buy it out and try it again. So today we've been working on a display and when Sharon came in today we were in the middle of all that we've been working on it for two days so she had a big mess in her area I had a big mess in my area but that little area is coming together so well and we're just so happy with it. So I think I'll be doing a video on that and although I didn't get it 
filmed, uh, I'll be able to show you all the things that we did to, uh, to put that area together and give you some good ideas on how to display your jewelry or if you, if you do sell it in a store, uh, how to display that. And it was just some simple ideas that we came up with that we just thought turned out so good. Now, I decided that this one needed uh, not only a little bit of weight on the bottom of it, but I felt like it needed kind of a lift. So, I had this little board that came off a, a stamp that I thrifted, and I decided that that stamp needed to be more flexible. So I took the stamp off the block and um, and just now I just use that stamp like I do my clear stamps. So I had this block, I actually did that with some of my stamps and I had this block and I painted this in the color buttercream just so I would have a good base and now I'm taking a napkin and decoupaging just around the uh, all the sides of this and I'm not bothering to cut it because uh, once I get it on here I'm just going to tear that excess off or sand the excess off and uh, that will take care of my um, that would take care of my edges and once this dried here I did, it was wet so I just went ahead and tore it off if you tear against the edge, then you won't ruin it. You, usually, you won't ruin it. Uh, but then when it dries, then I could just take a, a light sandpaper and, and just kind of go over that and neaten up those edges. But then I just glued that little shoe on there and it made a good little platform riser for it. And that is my second little shoe finished. And now I'm gonna make over a, a small ladle that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. And so this one is just very plain, but I'm gonna dress it up with a mold. And this is one of my resin molds that I had made up ahead. And I'm gonna glue that on and then glue a little rose mold to the very top to dress this handle up. And because this resin mold was made ahead and it is a little stiffer, I want to make sure that it stays in contact with the spoon while it's drying. So I just took some regular jute twine and tied around it good so that um, it would stay in place. And then I just removed it when it was dry. And I just glued that little extra trinket mold there to the top. And then once this was all dry well, then uh, I gave this two coats of the color buttercream. And then once uh, I got two coats of the color buttercream on this and let it dry well, uh, then I put, um, I finished it off with some white wax. And I use Dixie Bell white wax. Uh, I'm trying to tell more about my products. I've had some questions about that or some suggestions, actually. So this is Dixie Bell whitewash, uh, but I'm not, uh, I'm not specific about what type that I have to use. I sell these products, so obviously I have them in my store to use them. But I've tried different white waxes, and any paste white wax will do just fine. So I just kind of, I'm using a little brush here because I want to work it into that little detail. And then once I get that put on, then I'll just take a, a dry cloth and wipe off all the excess. And then the white will stay down in all that detail and make it pop. Now this spoon, once it is uh, finished, it can be hung uh, either by adding um, a, gluing a, hanger on the back or you could drill through it actually and put a hanger on that way. Uh, this one may end up getting put on a board at some point so I haven't decided exactly how I want to hang it yet. Uh, but again you can either drill a hole in it and hang it that way or you can put a hanger on the back with some E6000. So either way would work. Now again, I'm adding this little nest with some Spanish moss, 
And I'm using this adhesive that uh, my friend Paula brought me. And I've never used this before, but I thought I would spray a little on this and kind of work it in there and see how that holds. And actually it turned out really well. So once it dried well, then I removed it and glued it in. And now I'm gonna uh, just add some little bitty sprigs uh, from some picks that I have, just kind of little scraps from it. And I'm just gonna work some of those little bitty sprigs down in this nest because I want it to still look like a nest, but I wanna give it some dimension and I wanna brighten it up a little bit and make it show up better. So, and also bring the color from the spoon down into the nest. That just kind of makes it look a little more cohesive. And then I'm just gonna put a few little small uh, styrofoam eggs that I've painted in the color buttercream and uh, just kind of spritz some uh, brown specks on it. You can either use uh, a paintbrush for that or you could use a toothbrush. Uh, one of my viewers mentioned using a toothbrush, which I think is a great idea. But I just glued a few of these in here and, uh, and then I'm gonna just add a very, very simple and very small hang tag to this. And I had printed out some bookmarks on some cardstock and those bookmarks, I didn't use the whole thing, that, and I actually used them as hang tags instead, uh, but had this little butterfly on it. So I just cut a little shape here with that butterfly, just cut a little rectangular shape and, uh, and put a hole in the top with a hole punch, and then I'll just tie that on, and that will be my hang tag. And I did add just a tiny piece of lace there on the bottom. And again, uh, I'm on the fence about how I'm going to finish this off. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put this on a piece of barn lumber and put a hanger on the back of that barn lumber. But um, I just feel like that will make this more substantial. So that's most likely how I'm going to finish this one off. And then the next item that I made over is a little pin cushion. And it's funny, before I got the video up, but I had all my, my video taping done, I got that visit from a viewer yesterday from Sharon, and Sharon bought this piece while she was there. Luckily, I had already had everything filmed, uh, but this one is already sold and this is going to be a pin cushion so this is just a little vintage dish that uh, was missing the lid so uh, when i saw this at the thrift store i decided since it was a good price that i would turn it into a pin cushion so what i'm going to do is take this piece of fabric and i'm going to put some polyfill in the center of it and then tie that uh, Pull that up around it and tie it together, kind of like you're tying a little sack. And uh, I'll tie that together and then I'll glue it down in that dish. And that will make my pin cushion. Anytime you find a dish uh, of any kind that you really like, but it's missing the lid, think of what you can turn it into. Uh, because you can often buy those at a really good price. So uh, it's a good value if you can think of something that useful that you can make out of it or some uh, decor that you can make out of it. But I love the little flowers on the side of this and immediately I knew what I wanted it to look like and it was very easy to turn this into what I wanted it to look like. So I could have used a white sock for this. That would have been the easiest thing to do, but I didn't have any white socks handy today or this day. So um, I just used some fabric, but the socks work better because they just gather better and uh, it's just easier to make, to give them a neat look. And obviously you don't want that sock to show on the top or most socks you wouldn't want to. Uh, but I'm going to be putting a doily over this, so that wouldn't have mattered. Uh, but this worked out just fine. So I just glued it in place, 
and then I'm going to take a small doily that uh, is just a little bit larger than the actual pin cushion part and I'm going to put that over the top of this uh, also. So I just take some glue and kind of work it down in there every inch or so around and until I get it really secure in it. And then I just cut a little small doily from a damaged um, doily that I had and it just happened to be just a little bit larger than that little um, pin cushion. Now I had two options here because I have some holes around the edge where I could thread some ribbon in and out of, of it and then uh, put, put it on that way. Uh, but I didn't really want that look, so what I end up doing is just gluing this all the way around. So I put a bead of glue all the way around my pin cushion, just above where the dish is. And then I glued it in place, and I just was really careful to... I did just a little bit at a time. I didn't try to glue all the way around and then put it on there. So I just got made sure that I had it centered where I wanted it. And then um, I just took some glue and just kind of worked my way all the way around with some hot glue and just uh, held it secure until I made sure that it was good and dry. And I just took my time with that step so that I could get that bead of glue just on that line. I didn't want to get it on the dish. Uh, I just wanted it on the, ver the very edge of the pin cushion. And I just love the look of it kind of hanging off there. And then I just took some, uh, some very thin lace and uh, started uh, gluing it all the way around uh, where the fabric goes in, if that makes sense, before it flares out there on the bottom. I just glued it really snug uh, up against that little area. And then, um, and then it, it helped hold that on. So each of these steps uh, added a little bit more to make sure that that held on very tight. And this step is just kind of finishing it off and giving it more of a finished look. Now Sharon said that she collects pin cushions. So uh, this one she was gonna add to her collection. So this one is going uh, to Ohio. So because this little dish almost has a, a daisy lifted pattern in it, I'm going to uh, add some little daisy touches to this one. And a very sweet viewer sent me uh, some different laces, and in that was some little daisy appliques uh, that were um, on a ribbon and I just kind of cut that apart and put one on the top and then I added one to the front uh, along with some buttons and uh, pearl beads uh, to finish off that front and in the center of the little daisy on the front I added a, a small button and um, I just really like how this one turned out. I think it turned out so sweet. Now I do have a hang tag that I got in the mail that I hadn't even had time to open. We've had so much going on at the shop this week. Uh, we started a new little section in the store and we've spent three days working on it and had such a mess. So uh, that's actually gonna be my next video. Uh, but then I'll show that hang tag then and any more that I get between now and then. But when we first opened the store, I sold vintage and costume jewelry. And I would just buy an estate out and then uh, sell it. And it sold really well. Uh, but then uh, it seemed like maybe it was a lot of work to keep it up. So at some point, I kind of let my stock run down and kind of got out of it. Uh, but I had an opportunity to buy someone's estate with a lot of jewelry. 
So we decided to try it again. And so uh, we've been working on a jewelry section with lots of display ideas and even uh, decided to make a little, uh, a little girl's tea party area, not an actual place where they could have a tea party, uh, but display some items that they could use in their little dress up trunks. So we're really excited about that. That's been a fun project, but one more mess in the store. And again, we just hadn't had time to do much else. So I'll be glad to be able to post that video and move on to something else. Although I have had a ball with it and I think Tammy has also. But again, I was so happy with how this little pin cushion turned out. And now I have one more item to uh, make in this vignette. And I don't even know if you could call this one a vignette. It's just lots of little shabby chic items. But uh, my last item that I'm going to make over is a little um, silver plated dish. And I know you guys have seen these. It's a little dish that's almost on a little stand. And uh, I don't know if this was a soap dish, a candy dish, or what it was. But this one isn't real. Uh, but I do like the size of it. And um, I thought about turning it into a pincushion. But then I decided I didn't know if I would like that. So, what I decided to do with this was to kind of make it look like a little bird bath, and that's what I ended up doing. So, I took this little spindle and glued it in the center of that little dish, which is now going to be a bird bath, and then I took one of these little birds from the Dollar General and glued it to the top. So once both of those dried really well, then um, I gave this two coats of the color Haint Blue, and that's a Dixie Belle color. And then once this dried well, uh, I thought about using a white wax, but I think this blue, although I love the color, is light enough. So uh, I am decided to use not a brown wax, but the Van Dyke Brown glaze on this. And that will settle down into all the details, especially of the bird, and, um, and really bring them out. Uh, but I like the look of the brown glaze on this color. So I got me some uh, baby wipes handy in case I got too much on. And I'm just going to uh, put it on and wipe it off as I go. And I have a dry towel in case I decide to use that. But right now I'm kind of working with this baby wipe because I want to make sure that I don't um, make this color too dark. And I will say that um, I clear coated this first because again, I wanted to make sure and not change up this color too much. Really all I wanted to do here is bring out some of that detail. So a little bit of a, a brown haze on it is good mm -hmm. because I like the look that it gives this paint, but I definitely didn't want to change the color. So again, I just kept that, that baby wipe using it and, um, and then um, I did clear coat it first. So make sure anytime that you're not sure if your glaze or your brown wax is gonna uh, be too dark, make sure you clear coat it first so that it's a lot easier to wipe off if you don't, if you get too much. And it also, the paint doesn't accept the color as well. So uh, it, it just works out a lot better if you're just really mainly wanting to bring out detail. But it really, really helped this bird uh, because anytime you paint, something with detail, just a solid color, you almost lose all that detail. It's really hard to see it. So you either need a white wax or a brown wax of some kind or some kind of dark wax or light wax to bring it out. So as you can see, it really made the little details show up much better. 
and I decided with this one that it really didn't need anything else. I just, I love the look that I got uh, when I got the, the wax the way I wanted it. And again, I, I just didn't feel like it needed anything else. I could have tied some kind of a shabby bow on it or something, but I felt like if I did that, I would take away from the look mm -hmm. of, um, I mean, to me, it looks like a little bird on a bird bath. And so that's what I wanted to keep. And I forgot to mention that I did add some, uh, some gilding wax to this one. So I just used a little bit of gold gilding wax around some of the edges. And um, once you use a darker wax on colors like this, and then it works well on this color, and it also works well on uh, some sort of a, a light pink, maybe a tea rose or something. It really works good on both of them to give them a really vintage look. So I'm just barely adding a little bit of it around the edge and um, that, will, um, that will add some more of an antique look to it, I feel like. And any of those little high rims there, I just very carefully added a tiny bit of that gilding wax. And again, it works so well with this color. So again, I just added it on some of those high spots, and I even added a little bit to the bird. But I just love, again, how this turned out. This could be a little uh, dresser dish, but I just love the look of that little bird on uh, the bird bath. So here is my assortment of items. Again, they're not really a vignette. It's just kind of a bunch of little items that I could buy at a very low price and turn them into pretty shabby chic decor. And again, some of these items, the little birds and the little shoes could be used in a nursery. But this is my favorite. My favorite is this little pin cushion, I think. I want to say to you guys how very, very much I appreciate all of you and all your very sweet comments. Uh, you just make me feel so supportive, and I'm just really, really grateful for every one of you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.